Hello and good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live from our news hub here at Desawe Kanda. Also live on 23 Ghana on Facebook, the SFE channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. I am Alfred Okansi. Tonight, we sit with the man who has been popularly acclaimed by the National Democratic Congress to wrest the Ayawaso West Wagon parliamentary seat from the NPP in the upcoming 2024 elections. John Dumelo is my guest tonight. Also, did embattled Cecilia Dapa file her tax returns? The Ghana Revenue Authority has been petitioned to give details of this and been responding to this petition filed by a concerned Ghanaian of which we have a copy of that petition plus the response of the Ghana Revenue Authority on this matter. Stay with us tonight. Also, uh, complaints of frustration in the acquisition and renewal of passports forces the Minister for Foreign Affairs to storm the passport office earlier today. But to what end, really? We find out from you what your experiences with the passport office has been. And, and we're encouraging you to, to share your thoughts with us. You know, we're very, very interactive as always tonight. If you go on our Facebook page and Facebook and Twitter, we're very interactive. The hashtag is gonna tonight. Let's hear from you. I am out for the council. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. There is tension in the Boku municipality after two communities were attacked, leading to a fierce gun battle and intermittent gunfire causing panic among market women and school children. The police in Jakubu have denied deliberately shooting two suspected criminals, claiming they attempted to escape custody. One of the deceased family is, however, demanding an independent investigation, expressing dissatisfaction with the police's explanation. I want an investigation to go on. I don't understand why my brother should be in the custody of the police. And along the line, my brother would die. I don't know what happened, actually happened. So taking my brother from the police station, I mean, to a different place, and I mean, killing them, that one, I don't understand. I'm pleading on IGP to help me to solve this issue. The Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Shelley Ayokobuchi, has sacked some public officers on secondment at the passport office who have overstayed their time. Paying an unannounced visit, the minister indicated that recent reports of corruption and poor service delivery by some of the officers has brought the name of the ministry into disrepute. This particular visit has become necessary because of some reports that I have. Reports that officers and there are nine or so agencies represented in any passport application center that these people represented from the various agencies and i will not say that my own officers are not part of it but these people are involved in illegal activities The Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, has reiterated its call for a national dialogue on the free senior high school program, focusing on mobilizing resources to support its sustainability. The General Secretary of NAT, Musa Tanko, who made the call, emphasized the need to reassess the program in light of the country's economic situation. Is GES saying that when the stakeholders have met and they have taken their decision on how to support the school, they should not come and seek clearance before they should come and support the school? We don't get this thing, so we don't get it. And that is when we are in difficulties. Basic schools are in difficulty. And like we always say, the head, the head teachers, they pre-finance basic school. Basic school capitation grant is in areas for over five times. That's not being paid. A staff of four in companies in Accra have been picked up by the police for data breaches. The exercise by the Data Protection Commission forms part of enforcement of the Data Protection Act 2012, Act 843. Recently, we put out a public notice, and before the public notice, we had notified uh, uh, about 250 non-complying data controllers by letter. 
quoting the section 56 of our act saying that if you are a person who, has, who is supposed to comply, you have failed to do it, you are breaching uh, the act, you are failing and uh, non-complying with the law. Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. Now, there's a conversation we're going to be having tonight together with you. Here's what we're asking you to do. Go on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana on Facebook, right? We've put a question there. And a number of you already, we have had hundreds of you sharing your experiences with us at the passport office. Because per the United Nations survey, passport officials at the passport office have been captured as one of the highest bribe tickets in in this country now take a look at this this is what we put on our facebook page this question that a number of you have been sharing your thoughts and your experiences with us says how is it easy to acquire or renew a passport how much did you pay and the responses have been overwhelming if you go on our facebook page tv3 ghana hundreds of you sharing your experiences with us are the uh, uh, hand, uh, that's the passport office and and the monies that you've had to pay some running into eight thousand five thousand three thousand the minister is furious but beyond you know the the verbal expressions of the minister what has to be done to ensure that citizens do not fall victim to this again beyond her anger that's what the question we're asking tonight but coming up next did the embattled Former Sanitation Minister Cecilia Abna Dapa filed her tax returns. The Ghana Revenue Authority has responded to a petition filed by a concerned Ghanaian, of which we have a copy of that particular petition and, and, the, and the, the details of it. We're going to be finding out shortly what the uh, Ghana Revenue Authority is saying about this petition concerning Cecilia Dapa's tax returns but these are the demands of the petitioner mike michael aflu now take a look at this um that's what we, we got from the petition which we have a copy of it says is demanding a comprehensive investigation um, into the source of funds found at cecilia dapa's residence so we are talking about the recent findings by the osp the a little over five hundred thousand dollars and of the over two million CDs that was found, plus the one million dollars reportedly stolen, and then also investigations into any potential undeclared earned income or assets, and then three assessment of Cecilia Dapes tax compliance history during her tenure as a public servant, also prompt collection of any tax owed if applicable transparency throughout investigation process to maintain public confidence in the capabilities of the Ghana Revenue Authority that these are the demands of the petitioner who goes by the name Michael Aflu and he is the former president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation Ghana that's the petitioner, Michael Flew, the former president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation in Ghana. Thankfully, he's joining us on Zoom for a quick conversation on this petition he sent to the GRE about Cicely Adapa's tax returns. Thank you, Mr. Flew, for staying up to stay with us here on Ghana tonight. First of all, what informed this decision to, to petition the GRE about Cecilia Adapa's uh, tax returns? You know, when the issue came up, all kinds of narratives were going on on air. So I listened to all the narratives and I realized that there could be tax implications involved in all that was being discussed. Like uh, some saying part of the money belongs to the late brother of the minister. Some saying the money belongs to the husband you know, and all the other narratives. And so I realized that in all these, we could have tax implications, even if they are gifts, we have gift tax, even if 
it's from the husband. We, we need to find out the source of the income. So that the most important thing was knowing the source of the income and whether it is taxable or not. So that is why I decided to petition the Commissioner General, you know, to uh, apply his mandate under the tax laws to invite the former minister, right. the husband, and any other related party, you know, to find out whether or not they have filed their tax returns and I whether see. or not the sources of those incomes are oh. Ghana oh. and then whether they are taxable in Ghana. I see. But uh, among the demands that you're making includes a demand for an investigation into any potential undeclared income by Cicely Adapa. You want to cl clarify that for me? Yes. You know, under our tax laws, uh, the law states that... Hello? ...that income accruing in, derived from, brought into, or received in Ghana, is taxable in Ghana. So, generally, we first of all, ascertain the source of the income, and then whether or not that income is taxable. Now, confirm this for me that, that has the GRA responded to this petition that you sent asking these questions of them of Cecilia Adapa's tax returns? They have. They have. In their, in their letter dated uh, August 11th, 2023, and signed by Mr. Daniel Edisi, the Deputy Commissioner Operations 1. They are saying that, among other things, you know, the first part of the, of, of the letter referred to the demands that I made in my letter. And then, then, they, then they responded by saying, be informed that your petition is receiving the necessary attention. The High Net Worth Office of the Ghana Revenue Authority had already commenced a tax compliance investigation into the tax affairs of Mrs. Isila Dapa ahead of your referred petition. The Commissioner General is also aware of the ongoing investigations by the Ghana Police Service and the Office of Special Prosecutor into the subject matter of your petition. And it's hopeful that the outcome of these investigations will complement the tax compliance investigations of the High Network Office. I see. But also, we, 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 in fact, we have just, my producer has just telling me we've received, we've just received a copy of the response of the GRA to your petition, which we just put on the screen right now. So thank you for furnishing us with that um, response from the GRA. But so is the GRA saying that your request is being looked into already by the OSP and the CID, so it's been taken care of, the tax... Uh, returns, the income tax returns of Cicely Adapa, is it, is it part of the OSP and the CID investigation? And if you could please, Ms. Aflu, if you could please sit back a bit for me so we can have a, a full view of you. Yes. What, what, what he said, in fact, the reply is saying that mm -hmm. be informed that your petition is receiving the necessary attention. Okay. The High Net Worth Office of the Ghana Revenue Authority had already commenced a tax compliance investigation into the tax affairs of Mrs. Cecilia Dapa ahead of your referred petition. The Commissioner General is also aware of the ongoing investigations by the Ghana Police Service and the Office of the Special Prosecutor into the subject matter of your petition, and is hopeful that the outcome of these investigations will complement the tax compliance investigations of the high net worth office. I, I see. So thank you. I mean, so then means that the GR has already started some working in there. So, but how about the other demands that you're making in this petition? Did the GRA specifically respond to all of them that they're going to meet them? This is all they've said for now. But, but they said that uh, they cannot accede to the uh, regular updates that are requested for. Okay. Yeah, they said we are unable to accede to your request for regular updates 
on right. the on, on the matter because of right of the taxpayer in respect of whom the tax investigation is being carried out to confidentially to confidentiality under section 7 of the revenue administration act 2015 act 915 okay zaflo i thank you very much for sharing this with us and then also for us here uh, at the media general we're going to be keeping tabs on this so that if there are any further information from the GRA to your petition, we'll definitely put it out to uh, our viewers as well. So thank you for sharing this with us and, and the details of this petition and response from the GRA. Michael Flew is a former president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation Ghana, and he has petitioned the Ghana Revenue Authority on Cecilia Dapa's income tax returns and other forms of tax returns if she was engaged in any other venture that she was getting income for so that's it but coming up next here on ghana tonight we sit with the man who has been popularly acclaimed by the national democratic congress to wrestle the iaso west wagon parliamentary seat from the npp in the upcoming 2024 general elections we have an exclusive with John Dumelo. Well, and ahead of this interview, a number of you have been sending questions. I'll try the best I can to ask, <laughs> ask a few of them for you. But John Dumelo is with us in the studio. Good evening. Good evening. Thank boss. you for joining us. Simia, how are you? I'm well. Good. Congratulations to you. Ah, thank you. It's in order. Yeah, thank you so much. You have been endorsed. Yes. As well, a parliamentary candidate for yes. Yawaso West Wagon. Yes. The ticket of the NDC. Yes. I hope you are not getting into parliament to make a million dollars. Oh, <laughs> I'm just getting into parliament to serve my people and to receive my salary as all the other parliamentarians. You have not ever dreamt of making a million dollars? I have, politician? through farming. But not through politics, no. You have dreamt of making a million dollars through farming? Yes. But not through politics? No, not at all. You resist the venture? Oh, yes. But how did the news of Fred Nyame's decision to step aside, throw his weight behind you, right. get to you? Well, um, for me, it's been months of, you know, talking back and forth, um, having a series of meetings with, you know, the various stakeholders and um, you know everything was at the st doorstep of Fred you know mm -hmm. to see whether you know he's still going to contest or he's um, going to throw his support behind me I mean mind you I've known Fred for more than 20 years and so we've come a long way and mm -hmm. I think that um, finally he decided that you know well, let me just step down and um, throw my support behind my good friend uh, John Dumelo. Were well, you looking forward to a contest? I, I didn't. The two of you. Well, I, I didn't mind the contest, but I felt like a contact a contest wasn't needed. It wasn't necessary, you know, because we, uh, the party looked at Iowa as like a different or a special case, mm -hmm. you know, because at contested in 2020, we did extremely well. We nearly won. Uh, we just lost by a small margin, and so it was just. Um, uh, it would have been suicidal to change the candidate. And so, you know, it, it's a democracy, but um, a lot of negotiations have to go on. As, as a democratic party, you have to sit down and do your research. And based on certain research, you realize that, okay, for this place, let's maintain this person. For this place, let's see how best we can change this person and so on and so forth. And so that's exactly what went on. Well, some were surprised when the news about you wanting to test your metal in the yet to be created sal mm. constituency mm. what what informed that that kind of test the political test that you 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 sought to 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 do well you know uh, after the 2020 elections i i you know one of the write ups i did was it, it's time for me to um venture more into farming, explore Ghana, mm -hmm. see different opportunities. And, uh, you know, the Sal area was where I found myself, you know, doing a lot of ginger farming and other uh, farming activities. Well, not, not the Sal area per se, but the whole of the tea region, you know. And so it's very, it was very uh, common that once I frequent that place, you know, the people will say, oh, John, you know, you're from here, come and contest and so on and so forth. And um, 
as a as a, a committed and staunch member of the NDC, wherever I find myself, I try to help you know the party in any way I could or I can, and so you know that's what I was doing. But nevertheless, I never left Iowa's West. My leg was still here, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I was still involved in you know activities here and there. I see. You know. Because that's one of the messages being thrown at you now that. You appear in inconsistent, and 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 so you what at one point you you were mulling the idea of going to contest in Sal. You were just saying your leg was still in Iowa, so where's mm -hmm. we gone? How how do you how do you respond it, it, to it that? It does it doesn't it doesn't uh, that doesn't define inconsistency because I remember so well I. Uh, there was a program I went to in Eastern Region, and uh, you know I, I'm not going to mention the constituency's name. And I just went there for one program, and you know as soon as I left it, they were like, "Oh, John, eh, it would be nice for you to come and contest here in the Eastern Region, you know, because of your farming activities and so on and so forth." And so I believe that sometimes wherever I find myself, people feel as if, "Oh, maybe I can represent them." And so it wasn't a matter of inconsistency; it was a matter of, "Okay, John has to make a decision whether he's coming back to contest in Iowa West or not," which. I eventually did. You see, when, when we advertised that you were coming here, one of the things our viewers pushed to us was uh, a video by one, one person in your constituency. That's, I'm not talking about the professional constituency of entertainment and film. Right, 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 right. One it said, uh, Nanayao says, Mr. Logic or mm -hmm. something. He says, you, he says, I read, he appeared arrogant because he was now a parliamentary candidate and because of that he's going to lose I, I i watched that video and i mean i wouldn't make logic out of what mr logic was saying at all you know you will not make logic yes. out of what I mean, mr logic was yes saying. i mean one he's a member of or he's a sympathizer of the mpp i mean that's one so i i don't expect any different logic from what he's saying i mean the second one is i mean Opinions are like noses, everybody has them. And mm -hmm. so some people will win, some people some people will think I'll win, some people will also think I will not win. And so that's his opinion. But I I, I bear a different opinion and the thirty seven thousand people who voted for me in twenty twenty also bear a different opinion and uh, I think the over 45,000 who would vote for me in 2024 would also bear a different opinion that yes indeed I can win and I'll win. He says you'll lose again. Well that's his opinion. I, I like I said, I don't make logic out of that. You had to, you've now had the opportunity to to know this constituency a bit right, more, right? Right. After contesting in 2020, what are some of the seeding problems in there, really, that that you are going to now carve a message out of to present to the people mm. that you are a worthy option? Mm. Look, I, I I think in those days, we when you look at the business community, it was more in Adabraka to do, you know, Accra Central. But I think now it's shifting towards the Iowa West area. I mean, if you look at Airport, East Legon, Jolu, West Legon, uh, Roman Ridge, that's where you have most of the corporation headquarters. You have East Legon, you have most restaurants, most eateries, most lounges. And so that's become the economic hub of, you know, the capital. Now, one thing which is important is security. And mm -hmm. once it's becoming the economic hub, you know, of course, jobs are being created. And so, and so one of the things I'm planning to do is to op make sure that businesses open more in Iowa West. But mm -hmm. at the same time, people who pass through or people who live or people who do business in Iowa West should feel safe. Uh, and so security is one of the things I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. I mean, day in, day out, you hear about people snatching phones and so on, and so yeah. motorbikes and so on and so forth. Especially and in the student community. Especially area. in the student community, Legon Campus, mm -hmm. which is dear to my heart. I mean, uh, about two months ago, I donated some streetlights to to the Legon authorities, you know, to brighten up the whole place. And of course, I'm planning as much as possible to increase. Uh, and your opponent is also doing quite some work on the ground. I haven't seen her work so far. You haven't seen the work of no, I, I, I Lady really, Al-Hassan? I, have, I really haven't seen, you know, work that is worthy to be mentioned. I mean, really, I mean, people are attacking students every time. She hasn't done anything about it. I donated street lights. I'm still donating street lights. I'm concerned about the people. But I don't think she's shown any sympathy for the students so far. But um, Samson says she's drilling boreholes in the, in, 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 at the University well, of Well, the borehole she's true? drilling is in Sabah Hall, and she promised to drill that borehole in 2019. And now before she she's probably realized that I'm coming to contest, she's probably, you know, quickening up her projects, you know. So that's... 
Maybe it's because of you that she, she, I, I think, yeah. Lady it, Allah Hassan is yeah, quickening pretty much. Project. I mean, you promised that in 2019. Uh -huh. 2019, when I, was, when I decided to dredge that gutter in Westland and I was stopped, they came out to say they'll con construct that drainage. Up to now, that drainage hasn't been constructed. I'm, I'm pretty sure next week they'll start work because probably now I'm, I'm confirmed as the parliamentary candidate of IRC West Bourbon. The, the people of Bawaleshi, they are in your constituency? Yeah. This one here from Emmanuel Kwanza says, Good evening. The people of Baoleshi are also concerned about the issues of lack of street lights in most parts of the area. Right. It says we are part of Ayo Aso West Wagon right. as well. Right. We need to be taken care of. Right. This is to you. Yeah. Sure. Like I said, um, you know, I started this lighter project in the whole of Ayo Aso West. I've started on Legon Campus. I'm going to extend it to other areas. Excuse me, other areas of the constituency. And so Baoleshi will not be left out. And I'm going to work directly with you know. The assembly men and women who represent the people as well, you know, uh, when it comes to local why, governments. Why did you lose the 2020 elections? Well, for me, I think I won. We won. We won the 2020 you elections. You won? Yes, we but won. But you are not the MP. I know, but what I'm saying is that we won the 2020 elections. Wow. We've had the best results so far um, in, but, in, in, in the history of Ayawa West Wogon. Are you talking about this? That's yes. you. Yes. That's 37,478. Which is the highest NDC has gotten so 48. far. 48.3%. Yes. And then Lydia has 39,000. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, close call. It was a very close call. And I, I think, and I think, you know, sometimes when you're about to be successful, you know, mm -hmm. you take the first step and then you have a second and step. But you look at the presidential, mm -hmm. there was just about um, almost 200, just about a little over 200 Difference. votes. Yeah. Difference. Yeah. So you see that in the parliamentary, your difference was about 2,000. Yeah. But in the presidential, John Mahama and President Kufuado had almost the same. Yes, So pretty much. have you diagnosed yes. why John Mahama did well yes. than you, the yes, candidate, yes. in I, the area? I think we've diagnosed it. Uh, I think a few months after we lost the elections, we sat down to, you know, analyze the results and see where our shortcomings and our shortfalls were. And we know why we got those results and we know how we are going to win in 2024. So why did you get those results? Oh, I mean, that one I think is something that I, I, I will share later. Some people said that you were muscled out of it with strategy, that you weren't vigilant enough. I think we were extremely vigilant, you know, during the 2020 elections. Um, I think certain things went on, which I can't disclose, but uh, we've realized those things and we are working on those things to make sure that in 2024 we win the elections. I mean, if you look at the whole Iowa Suez population, we, we know what the MPP did. I mean, sitting back to analyze everything, we know what they did. What did the MPP and, do? And no, this time around, they, they, they can't do that anymore. What did the MPP oh, do? That, I mean, that one, I'll share that later. But no, they won, they won the elections. Yes, but they will not win again. It's as simple as that. MPP will not win. Iowa's in 2024? Win. No. I mean, look, my hardworking constituency executives, my hardworking branch executives will not allow that to happen because they are in charge of the campaign. And those who voted for me, the 37,000 people, this time we are going to increase it, you know, to more than 45,000. More than 45,000? Yes. I mean, we're going to give the MPP a, a, a gap. What's informing this, this increase in the people on the ground? Because I've spoken to them and they've told me point blank. Some mm -hmm. people regretted voting for the MPP in Iowa West Wagon. I mean, just mm -hmm. like the general feeling across. Mm -hmm. Some people regretted voting for the MPP. They realized that, you know what, they made a mistake. Um, and they, they, once they voted for the MP, you know, she hasn't been visible again. She's just disappeared. So it's the just, MP hasn't been visible? In most of the places in Iowa West Wagon. I mean... For instance, why? I mean, for instance, and Baoleshi, Okonglo, um, you, you know, even sometimes, uh, even Jolu, Abilengpe, if you ask them now, they'll probably tell you that they haven't set eyes on Lydia since, you know, she was elected in 2020, in, in the year 2020. So what message are you sending to these people? That I'm there for them, them, but that I'm there for them. I'm not one of those politicians that will just come and, you know, um, say, oh, vote for me, vote for me, and I'll disappear and reappear again after four years. I'm not like that. And no, no. I, I'm really listening to their concerns because, look, of course, when I enter parliament, I'm there to serve the people. I'm there to represent the people. And so if I fail, definitely they'll not give me another mandate. See, I've had a number of parliamentary candidates say the same and members thing. of parliament yes. come sit before me and say the same things you are saying. Yes. And they go and do differently. They disappear. 
well, the constituents don't I, see them. I, I think I'm, I'm learning from such mistakes of you know my predecessors. I'm learning from such mistakes, and it will be excuse me to say um, you know dumb on my part to come and be be voted and then disappear and not represent my people who voted for me. Kojo Tradels says you are a farmer. You've seen attempts to get young people into farming. Right. What is the disconnect and why is that not succeeding? And this is going to be my final one from our, our viewers. Why yes. is what not succeeding? The attempt, she says, to increase the youthful population in farming. It goes on to say that the farming population is aging. Yeah. And we don't have a lot more young people in there. Right. What has to change right. to get a lot more young people interested in farming? Finally. Well, I, I think... I think Myself getting into farming, I've, well, most of the messages I receive, people say they've been encouraged to get into farming. And most people I interact with or send me, who send me messages on social media say, you know what, John, because of you, I want to start farming. Because of you, I have a plot of land or two and I want to start farming. And it's exciting to know that at least I'm inspiring, uh, you know, a couple of young people to get into farming. I mean, look, farming is all that we have. Farming is, I mean, if we don't have food to eat, it's probably, you know, a matter of national security. I mean, we need to eat and the food has to come from somewhere and the food has to come from farmers. And so my interest in farming is based on the fact that it's, it's silly that we are importing, we are still importing stuff when we can grow them here. Mm -hmm. we, we are in August. The people in, the farmers in Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger are planning their new onion planting season. But we are here depending on the rain. Whilst we can use our irrigation properly and efficiently so that we stop importing millions of dollars of onions and tomatoes and tiger nuts from all these countries. Whereas we could have, you know, farmed here ourselves. And so it doesn't make any sense that we have everything here. And then we say that we are going to import um, all these food stuff, which really doesn't make sense. And okay. so I'm, 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 one of the things I want to change is to encourage more people to get into farming so that in the next five to 10 years, we see a decline of imports of these foodstuffs. We can only wish you well. Thank you. Uh, but our next conversation is on passports, the frustration that people go through in applying and renewing their passports. Have you had an experience? I have. I've had an experience. Um, How frustrating was it? It was quite frustrating. I mean, you, you definitely have to pay. You have to pay an you amount. You have to pay someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to make a call. Oh, Charlie, I need a passport. But I feel that it shouldn't be like that. My, 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 my concern is, or my solution is, why don't, they, why don't they decentralize the passport application? Not just the application, but the whole printing process. You know, Cape Coast had a backlog over 40,000 a couple of months ago. Um, you know, Accra has a huge backlog. Why don't you, you know, print in Cape Coast? Why don't you, I don't know if they are printing in Cape Coast. Why don't you print in Kumasi? Why don't you print in the northern part of the country? So that just decentralize it. So that you don't have to go through all these, you know, processes of paying guru men and so on and so forth to acquire passports. It's, it's, it's disheartening. John Dumelo is the parliamentary candidate for the IOSO West Work on Constitution. Ayawaso West Wogon constituency on the ticket of the NDC. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. I did for you. As well. Also, um, coming up next, this conversation complains of frustration in the acquisition and renewal of passports, forces the Minister of Foreign Affairs to storm the passport office. But to what end, really? We find out from you, the members of General Public and our viewers, what your experiences have been, and we have droves of comments coming in. We'll be back shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint 
is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, flamingo paint, simply superior. What does winning mean to you? For Yao, it's seeing the joy in his mother's eyes after he provided her with a state-of-the-art kitchen to cook her signature Una Pujo love. It's a mega win. For Ajua, it's turning her passion for photography into a successful career while providing her children with the best education possible. It's a mega win. For Kwame, it's becoming his own boss and starting his music business. It's a mega win. Whatever winning means to you, Mega 6 Lotto can help you achieve it in grand style. With only 49 numbers to choose from, the odds are always in your favor. Play with as little as two Ghana CDs for a chance to win millions of CDs every week. Download our Android and iOS apps. Dial star 266 hash or visit Mega6Lotto.com to make a mega impact on your life and the lives of others. Mega 6 Lotto. Mega winnings, mega impact. The Mega 6 Lotto is regulated and monitored by the NLA. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful M Punch Wana? Ha! Yes, and I'm young because I'm a fraud. Let's say problems room. It's not my own way, dear mammy. Papa, patches and any other some kitua. I'm quite points, you know. We share me more than one baby beer and also a moment. Do mammy do I'm a fire and my own crime, you know. Who for one I'm quite more ever. And everything yourself. My mammy, no, I do you at the whole wound to me, Nancy. And then you call end point, or mamma, and then the white dear, what's me a sorry, Nancy. That's end point for you. Of a brother, too. Hello. Hey, I should show what chair. Okay. A free bra would be end point, what does it? I'm a choir, you know. Ten valiant men, all poised to battle for the bragging right. Old wise is say, truth as time goes on. The stars have aligned for us in this moment. Our time is now. We did not come to throw someone's shoes. We came with our own. Fresh power, phenomenal strength, new and never seen before. Who takes the title? Ghana's Strongest, the power to do. Gosh, the new season of Ghana's Strongest, Sunday at 4 p.m. only on TV3. Ghana's Strongest is powered by Gassem, the nation builder. Brought to you by Mixi Choco, Channel Hot, Deluxe Acrylic Paint, Dragnet, The age old rivalry that senior high schools engage in is still present within alumni. The battle for bragging rights to a particular endeavor remains even after school. If your school can cook, it means your school is here. If your school can boast of good culinary masterminds, this right here is the perfect platform to showcase that skill set. Alumni have met and they have chosen representatives to take up the task of preparing extraordinary dishes to bring victory to their respective schools. Tell me what you're cooking. Week in, week out, these schools will mount these workstations in a bid to buy your nutritional affinity to them. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare your taste buds and fasten your aprons. These culinary experts are set to battle for the enviable crown of being tagged lords of the kitchen. This is Kitchen Wars Season 2. Kitchen Wars Season 2, Sundays at 5 p.m. on TV3. Don't miss it. Sponsored by Gino Tomato Mix. And Napa Foods. Say Napa. And Ye Ono Soko. PGL.
Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. Uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Shirley Ayoko Boche, today stormed the passport office upon complaints of frustration and bribe demand in acquiring or renewing passports. I'm sure a lot of you say, well, that's no news. She did not take it kindly with the staff at the passport office. Um, we'll hear from the minister shortly, but this is what indeed prompted some of the reactions we're seeing. There was a, a survey on the people's perception of corruption and bribery in certain public institutions in this country, which was carried out by the United Nations and other agencies within that's under the UN, including the Ghana Sascal Service as well, and the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj. Now, take a look at this. In, this was conducted in 2021 and released in 2022. And we could expand it a bit. Uh, you see the details in there. The Lance Commission actually came up as the, in terms of the average bribe size by the type of public official. The Lance Commission officials were the Biggest, they were taking huge bribes, big size. Then prosecutors, judges or magistrates, Ghana Immigration Service, elected local government representatives, MMDA officials, GRA custom officers, passport agency officials. Look at that, right in the middle. Teachers, lecturers or, or professors, public utility officials, doctors, nurses, and midwives. Now, bear in mind that we, they've had, we've had a number of these surveys, including, for instance, the Afrobarometer survey, which put the police at number one. Okay? But now, take a look at the regional breakdown. Let's go to the next. The OT region came tops as a percentage of direct bribe requests by public officials. They said the public officials in the OT region, they've been demanding, requesting bribe. Bear in mind that it's actually the smallest region among the 16. So in terms of numerical representation, it would actually, you know, differ if you do some further analysis. Then you follow up to the northern uh, um, areas like northeast, and then also upper east, upper west. Then Ashanti follows in that order. Now let's take a look at the next slide. It tells another story. This is the share of the cash, cash bribe received. Now, in terms of the bribes that were given in, in cash, police, police officials came tops with 96.9% of the cash received in the form of a bribe. Then following closely is the other public institutions plus the GRE, Tax revenue officers follows in that order. Then GRA custom officers, passport officers, passport agency officials can also follow in that order. So this is consistent with the number of surveys that have already you know, uh, been, been, been put out. Okay. So after this, we asked a question on Facebook. In fact, if you go on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. This is the question that we put out earlier. Take a look. We're asking you to share your experiences with us, specifically about the process of either acquiring a new passport or renewing your expired passports, how much you had to pay, and then also how the process was. Remember, there's some digitalization that has been introduced in the but people have found ways of making the digitalization useless so that it can benefit from the weaknesses in the system. This is Shirley Ayokoboche earlier today. Take a look. This particular visit has become necessary because of some reports that I have. Reports that officers and there are nine or so agencies represented in any passport application center that these people represented from the various agencies. And I will not say that my own officers are not part of it, but these people are involved in illegal activities. And when I say illegal activities, we all know 
just two days ago, the report um, in, in, in the Daily Guide that the, 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 the issue of Goro people involved in our passport acquisition process has become rife. It is wrong. How can 100 Ghana for standard service to acquire a passport and 150 for expedited service bump, be bumped up to 2,000 and 3,000? And here they don't even charge 2,000 now. They are charging 3,000. And it's wrong. But I can say, and we all would agree, that a Goro person is outside the passport office. They need somebody inside to work with. They cannot do it on their own. People are paying 3000 2000 to acquire passports. Why should this be so? And sometimes they don't even, they don't even, even, even carry out the, the, the so-called service that they promised them for charging them so much. The stories are horrific stories. People's experiences are not the best. Well, you see, that's the minister there. How many of you have actually paid 100 cities? 150 for expedited service. 150 Ghana cities. Well, we left it to you, our viewers, and the members general public to share your experiences with us. Let's go on our Facebook page right now, okay? Let's look at some of the comments. And, and if anybody paid 100 or 150 CDs. Um, this one here from Maya says, I paid 150 and got it in three months later. They wanted me to pay say, something small before giving it out, but I didn't. I had to call the HQ, that's headquarters, to make a complaint and later involve a friend who knows someone there. It was a hassle but I didn't pay for any extra. So this one, Maya's experience that she had to get, get someone she knows who works in there, a friend. How about if you don't know anyone? Look at this. This one here says, I applied online and they gave me 12 weeks to come for it and got to seven months. <laughs> Anytime I call them, all they say is that it's not ready yet. And I was frust so frustrated, so I had no option than to get an insider to print it for me at a cost of 500 CDs. They intentionally do that for you to pay. This is Kubo GH. Thank you. Oswald says, I pay 750 CDs for my passport at Cape Coast Passport Office. And yet still, I haven't gotten it. Wow. I have to pay additional 140 CDs. In other to says in order to get the passport book as soon as possible within two months. That's what they told me. Okay, Oswald, thank you so much for sharing with us. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Kontomponi Afre says, I went to Kumasi Premium today. Got there around 9:27 a.m. and finished around 10:48 a.m. I was number 99 though. I think it wasn't a hectic exercise, but the collection date on the receipt is a bit scary. January, oh come on. Wow. Let's go. Let's go to the next one. Okay. This one here says, um, okay, this is uh, amazing. Abi tweeting at us. He says, I applied last year and to date have not heard anything from them. They gave me a date in February for collection. Went there and was told it, it's not ready. Hmm. Very sad in this country. John Selom says he paid 1,300 CDs and it took just about six days. The system is working, quote unquote. 1,300 CDs. This one here says, had to do for my son and wife. The bill was 3,000 CDs. That, that's the bail from the Goro guy in Ho. Hmm. Ness at GH says, I completed the process last year, December. I was told it would be available on the 31st of December. I am still waiting for my passport to be printed out as of today. 
please, if you can help, kindly intervene for me. That's why we're reading this. In fact, so that the minister or whoever is, is in the Foreign Affairs Ministry would also forward these concerns uh, to the minister. This one here from Kwating. Kwating also says that they said the booklet is finished, but after I paid 1,500 CDs, two weeks it was ready. I had initially done, it says I had initially done the normal process um, on in two years, it never came, <laughs> it says book asa, quoting, and that's, that's the popular excuse or the reason that they give, that the booklet is finished, but is that really, really the case, that if you pay 1,500 magically, you get a booklet. So that is an area the minister would also have to look at. And even though the minister has spoken about this, is there a complaint center? Beyond, beyond the minister's anger that we've seen today, question that a number of you are asking is, is there a complaint center that we can all go to? And the complaint center actually works. That when you complain, your issues are taking up and then it works. Instead of saying, okay, all of you go home, don't, 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 don't report again. I think that's one of the things that she said today out of anger. Don't come, don't come to work. But after the anger, is the system working? That's what the people want. So this is an issue that we're staying on until people are able to give us a different experience of what they have been sharing with us today. We have so many, in fact, the comments running into, we have almost 1,200 comments already. And so we would be serializing the comments in the coming days. So stay with us. There's another one as well tomorrow on this same passport matter. We're going to talk about it until there's some change um, in that regard. But we're going to go to Niger. But you know, you know what? You can't go to Niger without a passport, obviously. See, we have to find a way. But coming up next, we head to Niger where the ec economic community of West African states has been condemning a move by the Niger junta to charge the ousted president with treason. We've just received a statement from the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS leadership. They've condemned the moves by the Niger junta to bring the treason charges against the ousted president of Niger, Mohamed Bazoum. Um, we, we have a copy of that statement. I'm going to put it on the screen right here. Here, portions of it. It says, ECOWAS has learned with, it says, stupefaction, stupefaction attempts to bring charges of high treason against His Excellency Mohamed Bazoum, President of the Republic of Niger. ECOWAS condemns this move as it represents yet another form of provocation and contradictions the reported willingness of the military authorities in the Republic of Niger to restore constitutional order through peaceful means. President Bazoum remains the democratically elected president of the Republic of Niger, recognized by ECOWAS and the international community. ECOWAS condemns his illegal detention and calls for his immediate release and reinstatement. So bear in mind that President Bazoum is still being held by the cool leaders in Niger. And that's why international security analyst Professor Kwesienin has actually predicted that it will take ECOWAS not less than nine months, six to nine months, to be able to put together a formidable force to invade Niger. In fact, according to him, the regional body does not have a standby force that can readily be deployed to execute a military intervention in member states. I spoke to him earlier. Take a look. Standby force concept was meant for a civil war case let's say something similar to Liberia, Sierra Leone, 
at a point in time, La Côte d'Ivoire. So we are using the standby force for an operation for which it, is, it has not been established. But I don't think this is something that can be matured within the next six to nine months. And what it means is that it's going to basically open a, a Pandora's box. And it's not just about what will happen in Niger. It is about, as I said, the narrative about new identities and standing up to colonial powers whose critical interest has been to take resources back to the metropole. But not only that, you know, the Niger case also raises fundamental concerns about issues of security force assistance. What kind of security force assistance do you provide to a country like Niger in which those who provided the assistance, the US, Czech, Turkey, and France did not understand the underpinning tensions and stresses within both the military and amongst the political hierarchy. So, so that's what's happening now uh, in there and the developments which we're looking at quite closely um, and then also be updating you on how things play out here on Ghana tonight. In fact, a lot of you also sharing your thoughts and your comments with us on the issues happening, um, especially in Niger. And then also, let's go straight to some issues in, in Boko, um, because we got information today, five people have been arrested um, as a result of the death of one person in the Boko municipality. Our correspondent there, Christopher Marco, brought us some details of what happened earlier today. Take a look. On Saturday, August 12, unidentified gunmen attacked parts of the Boko Township, resulting in one loss of life and three persons critically injured. The incident has sparked sporadic shooting within the municipality. Residents have expressed disappointment with the local administration's handling, fearing the constant gunfire and ongoing fatalities. Unidentified gunmen at about 1 a.m. on August 14 targeted Baduri and Azanga communities, causing significant damage. The raids triggered a large-scale gunfight in the township, causing panic among market women and school children. The military responded to the intense gunfire, which lasted 30 minutes, restoring peace in affected areas. Boko has experienced chieftaincy conflict for many years, which has led to the death of many people and the destruction of property. And we're monitoring this particular development in there and then how things are playing out. So let's go to Kumasi, where the Kumasi Technical University uh, students, some 600 of them, uh, who were asked by the authorities to defer their courses for not being able to register before the deadline date, have been protesting that directive by the authorities of the school. Um, the issue is we are not against the decision that the management has taken. We were here last week, Monday to Friday, to plead on our behalf. We went to the Dean of Students' office. We, go, we went on our knees to plead telling them to forgive us so that they can give us access to register for our courses. Now, our major concern is we have students that have paid in full. We have students that have paid for the penalty. We still have students that have spent a lot of money on their practicals, especially the catering students and the fashion students. They spent a lot of money. And as it stands now, we know the difficulties that we all are facing in this country. When we accept the decision that they have brought on board to defer our courses. I have a strong belief that we will still not get that money to continue our education the next academic year. And find more news on 3news.com. Thank you for staying with us here on Ghana Tonight. Join us same time tomorrow. I am Alfred Kansi. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior.